dive into the heart of American division, unraveling the Missouri Compromise. Early 19th century America stood on the precipice of transformation, teetering between unity and division. As the nation expanded, the contentious issue of slavery began to seep into the fabric of its burgeoning identity, setting the stage for a conflict that would define its moral and political landscape for decades to come. The United States witnessed rapid growth, with its borders pushing ever westward. This expansion brought prosperity, but also deepened the divide between North and South. Sectionalism, rooted in economic and social disparities, began to crystallize, with the institution of slavery at its core, threatening the very unity of the nation. The application of the Missouri Territory for statehood ignited a national debate that shook the foundations of the Union. The question of whether Missouri would enter the Union as a slave or free state became a lightning rod for broader concerns about the balance of power and the future of slavery in America. The North and South stood on opposing sides of the debate. The North, increasingly industrialized, viewed the expansion of slavery as morally reprehensible and economically unsound. The South, with its economy deeply entwined with slave labor, fought to protect its interests, arguing for the right to expand slavery into new territories. Key figures emerged in the Missouri Compromise debate, most notably Henry Clay and John Quincy Adams. Clay, known as the Great Compromiser, worked tirelessly behind the scenes to forge a middle path, while Adams, though less directly involved, provided critical support. Together, they navigated the turbulent political waters, seeking a resolution that would preserve the Union for a little while longer. The Talmadge Amendment, proposed by Representative James Talmadge, Jr. of New York, sought to restrict the spread of slavery into Missouri by gradually emancipating enslaved people living there. This proposal ignited a firestorm of controversy, highlighting the deep divisions between the North, which largely supported the amendment, and the South, which vehemently opposed it. Maintaining a balance of power between slave and free states emerged as a critical concern. The United States Senate and House of Representatives grappled with the implications of Missouri's admission as either a free or slave state. This balance was not merely a political tactic, but a reflection of the growing sectionalism that threatened the Union's cohesion. Behind the scenes, negotiations were fraught with tension and urgency. Figures like Henry Clay, known as the Great Compromiser, worked tirelessly to find a middle ground that would placate both sides. The stakes were high, as the future of the Union and the fate of millions of enslaved individuals hung in the balance. The Missouri Compromise, ultimately enacted in 1820, attempted to quell the immediate crisis. It admitted Missouri as a slave state and Maine as a free state, preserving the delicate balance in the Senate. Furthermore, it prohibited slavery north of the 36 degree 30 parallel, except within Missouri's boundaries, setting a precedent for future admissions. Public reaction to the Missouri Compromise was mixed. In the North, many viewed it as a necessary evil to preserve the Union, while abolitionists decried the further expansion of slavery. The South, meanwhile, saw it as a victory that affirmed states' rights to determine their own laws regarding slavery. This compromise, however, was only a temporary bandage on the deepening wound of national division. The Missouri Compromise played a pivotal role in shaping the United States' approach to state admissions in the years following its enactment. By establishing a precedent for the admission of states in pairs, one slave, one free, it sought to maintain a delicate balance between the North and South. This balance was crucial in a nation increasingly divided over the issue of slavery, serving as a temporary solution to the growing tensions. Key figures like Henry Clay and John Quincy Adams emerged as architects of compromise in an era of deep-seated division. Clay, known as the Great Compromiser, worked tirelessly behind the scenes to broker the deal that would allow Missouri into the Union as a slave state and Maine as a free state, thus maintaining the equilibrium between slave and free states. Their efforts underscored the importance of negotiation and compromise in American politics. The Tall Madge Amendment, which proposed prohibiting the further introduction of slaves into Missouri and emancipating the children of slaves at the age of 25, sparked controversy and highlighted the sectional divisions within the country. This amendment, although ultimately unsuccessful, 
signaled the beginning of a heated national debate over the future of slavery in America. The Missouri Compromise's provisions, particularly the establishment of the 36 degree 30 parallel, which prohibited slavery north of this line in the Louisiana Territory, were seen as a temporary fix rather than a permanent solution. This line, drawn in the sand, was a clear demarcation of the sectional divide within the country, symbolizing the growing rift between North and South over the issue of slavery. Public reaction to the Missouri Compromise varied significantly between the North and South. In the North, many viewed the Compromise as a concession to the slaveholding South, while in the South, the restriction of slavery's expansion was seen as a threat to their economic and social order. This division in public opinion further exacerbated the sectional tensions that would eventually lead to the Civil War. The Missouri Compromise not only shaped the political landscape of early 19th century America, but also left a profound mark on its cultural and societal fabric. This legislative act, while primarily political, deeply influenced the way communities in both the North and South perceived each other, steering the nation's collective consciousness towards an increasingly divided sentiment. It sowed the seeds of discord that would grow into defining elements of American art, literature, and everyday life, reflecting the complexities and tensions of a nation grappling with the moral and ethical implications of slavery. In the realm of American literature and art, the Missouri Compromise served as a backdrop to a burgeoning narrative that explored themes of freedom, bondage, and the stark realities of a divided nation. Authors and artists of the time began to weave the contentious issue of slavery and the Compromise's implications into their work, contributing to a rich tapestry of cultural expression that highlighted the nation's tumultuous relationship with the institution of slavery. This period saw a shift towards more politically and socially conscious works, setting the stage for the American Renaissance. The role of the press during the Missouri Compromise era cannot be understated. Newspapers and pamphlets played a crucial role in shaping public opinion on the issue of slavery and the Compromise itself. Through editorials, opinion pieces, and news reports, the press fueled the fire of debate acting as a mirror to the nation's conscience and a catalyst for public discourse. The vehement arguments presented on the pages of the nation's publications reflected the deep divisions within American society and underscored the press's emerging power as a tool of influence and persuasion. On the global stage, the Missouri Compromise and the broader issue of slavery in the United States elicited a range of reactions. While some countries viewed the Compromise as a pragmatic approach to a contentious issue, Others saw it as a morally weak concession that failed to address the inherent evils of slavery. This international perspective on American domestic policy added an external dimension to the debate, influencing how the United States was perceived by the rest of the world. It highlighted the growing importance of the slavery issue, not just within the United States, but as a matter of international concern and debate. As a pivotal moment in the lead up to the Civil War, the Missouri Compromise occupies a crucial place in the broader timeline of American history. It represents a significant, albeit temporary, resolution to the growing sectional strife that would eventually tear the country apart. The Compromise's legacy, fraught with the complexities of compromise and the moral dilemmas of a nation divided, serves as a reminder of the difficult path towards unity and the enduring struggle for justice and equality. Re-examining key moments of the Missouri Compromise through rare documents and letters sheds new light on the nuanced positions of its key architects. These historical artifacts offer a more intimate glimpse into the high-stakes negotiations, revealing the personal convictions and compromises that shaped this pivotal moment in American history. Henry Clay, known as the Great Compromiser, emerges in these documents not just as a political strategist, but as a man deeply torn over the moral implications of slavery. His correspondence reveals the weight of responsibility he felt in crafting a solution that would preserve the Union while postponing the inevitable conflict over slavery. The Missouri Compromise's contribution to American legal and constitutional debates is profound. By establishing the precedent of congressional authority over slavery in new territories, it laid the groundwork for future legal battles and discussions around states' rights and federal power, challenges that would continue to evolve well into the Civil War. In classrooms today, the Missouri Compromise is taught as a critical junction in the lead-up to the Civil War.
highlighting the complexity of the slavery issue and the challenges of balancing moral convictions with political necessities. This historical event serves as an essential case study in the evolution of American political and social systems. The states of Missouri and Maine, beneficiaries of the compromise, have since followed divergent paths, reflective of the broader American story. Tracing their histories back to this agreement illuminates how decisions made under the banner of compromise continue to shape state identities, cultures, and political landscapes. The revival of interest in the Missouri Compromise in modern politics and culture underscores its timeless significance in American history. As the nation grapples with issues of race, equality, and federal versus state powers, the Compromise serves as a pivotal reference point, illuminating the enduring struggle to balance unity with diversity. Unpacking the term sectional strife sheds light on the heart of the Missouri Compromise. This concept central to understanding the pre-Civil War era, illustrates the intense regional divisions over slavery. It is a testament to the deep ideological chasm that the Compromise sought to bridge, albeit temporarily. The Missouri Compromise stands as a notable case study in conflict resolution and political negotiation, offering lessons for current and future leaders. Its intricate negotiation process reveals the complexities of finding common ground amidst staunchly opposed viewpoints, highlighting the necessity of compromise in a functioning democracy. Exploring the psychological and human aspects of the debates and decisions surrounding the Missouri Compromise enriches our comprehension of this historical event. It brings to light the personal dilemmas, moral questions, and societal pressures faced by individuals involved offering a more nuanced understanding of the human condition within the political sphere. The role of slavery in the economic systems of the North and South and its impact on the compromise is a critical area of study. It underscores the economic underpinnings of the slavery debate, revealing how economic interests and moral considerations were intricately linked in the shaping of America's early political landscape. The Missouri Compromise stands as a testament to America's early attempts at navigating the treacherous waters of political compromise. Much like the Great Compromise of 1787, which shaped the structure of Congress, the Missouri Compromise sought to maintain a delicate balance between conflicting interests. Both instances underscore the nation's reliance on compromise to forge a path forward amidst fierce ideological divides. Comparing the Missouri Compromise to other historical compromises reveals a recurring theme of temporary solutions to deeply rooted issues. While it momentarily preserved the union between free and slave states, it also highlighted the limitations of compromise when addressing moral and ethical dilemmas. This pattern is evident in subsequent compromises, such as the Compromise of 1850, which further delayed the inevitable confrontation over slavery. The environmental and geographical considerations of the Missouri Compromise were significant as the agreement drew a literal line across the nation. This line, the 36 degree 30 parallel, not only demarcated the boundary between free and slave territories, but also underscored how geographical features could influence political decisions. This intertwining of geography and politics is a critical aspect of understanding the Compromise's implications. Advancements in technology and communication played a crucial role in the dissemination of information about the Missouri Compromise. The rapid spread of news via newspapers and pamphlets helped shape public opinion on the matter. This early instance of mass communication highlights how technological advancements can amplify political issues, influencing national discourse. The debates surrounding the Missouri Compromise also opened avenues for women and minority groups to engage in political discourse, albeit in limited roles. While these groups were largely excluded from formal political arenas, their contributions through petitions, writings, and moral support added valuable perspectives to the discussions. This involvement marked early steps towards broader participation in the nation's political life. The Missouri Compromise has found its way into literature, film, and media, serving as a backdrop for narratives that explore the complex nature of American history. Through adaptations and references, creators have brought to life the tensions and resolutions of this era, allowing audiences to engage with history in a deeply personal way. Education and public memory play a crucial role in preserving the history of the Missouri Compromise. 
By integrating this pivotal event into curricula and public discourse, we ensure that future generations understand the intricacies of our nation's past and the importance of compromise in a democratic society. Debunking myths and misconceptions about the Missouri Compromise is essential for a clear understanding of its implications and outcomes. Misinterpretations can skew perceptions of historical events, leading to a distorted view of America's journey through conflict and resolution. Accurate historical analysis helps illuminate the true significance of this period. The influence of the Missouri Compromise extends beyond its immediate effects, shaping future legislative compromises and political strategies. Its legacy demonstrates the power of negotiation and the delicate balance between differing regional and moral viewpoints, offering lessons in political diplomacy that remain relevant in today's complex landscape. Reflecting on the Missouri Compromise's enduring legacy, it's clear that its lessons are still pertinent. It serves as a reminder of the complexities of governance, the necessity of compromise, and the ongoing struggle to balance moral convictions with political realities. Its place in history underscores the importance of understanding our past to navigate the present.